This video was brought to you by Yamaha Proven Off-Road ATVs and Side-by-Side -side Vehicles. For the past eight months or so, I have been collecting and testing bows for Archery Talk's 2019 Hunting Bow Project. The contenders in the order I receive them are the Matthews Vertex, the Obsession Lawless, the Obsession FXL, the Hoyt Helix Ultra, the Prime Logic CT3, the Bowtech Realm SR6, and the PSC Evoke 31. Now, if many of you will notice that there are several brands not represented here. Please know that I reached out to just about everybody, but these guys get lots of requests and can't say yes to every single one. Hopefully we'll get a few of them on board for 2020. It's also worth noting that any opinions expressed here are mine and mine alone. What I might like about a bow, you might not. Please feel free to share your opinions in the comment section. And before we get started, if you could like, share, and subscribe, it really would help the channel an awful lot. I'll be breaking down each of the seven bows by category, and the first one might just be the most important, which is draw cycle. Now, I like how just about all of these bows draw, so I'm splitting hairs here, but if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to go with the Prime Logic CT3. It's really a very smooth and easy draw with no noticeable dump into the valley, and it really doesn't feel like a 70 pound bow at all. Plus, the back wall can be either rock solid with limb stops or a bit softer with cable stops. The bow comes with both, so you get to decide for yourself. The Hoyt Helix Ultra, Matthews Vertex, PSE Evoke 31, and Obsession FXL are right there with the Prime. The Helix Ultra is probably the easiest of the seven bows to draw and might have the softest feeling back wall. The Vertex is super smooth with zero dump into the valley, but it feels a touch stiffer than some of the others. The PSE starts off light feeling and gradually stiffens up as you approach the valley, and the FXL offers a nice linear pull into a rock solid back wall. The Bowtech Realm SR6 and Obsession Lawless are both a bit more aggressive to draw, but they're also the two fastest bows here, so that is to be expected. The next category is stability, and for me this is a two horse race between the Matthews Vertex and the Hoyt Helix Ultra. The Vertex has a shortish valley which means I have to stay aggressive on the shot, and that has led to some outstanding long range accuracy. This just doesn't feel like a 30 inch bow when I'm at full draw. But the Helix Ultra is right there with it. Unlike the shorter bows, the 34 inch Ultra allows me to touch my nose to the string without dipping my head. That extra anchor point has made this a very repeatable shooter and a bow I'd gladly take on a 3D course. The other bows hold their own in this category as well. I thought the Obsession Lawless was going to give me problems, but for a bow with a 5 and 1 8 inch brace height, it holds really nice. Up next is noise and vibration, basically what happens after the shot, and I'm going to give first place votes here to the Matthews Vertex. Like the Triax before it, the Vertex is wonderfully quiet and is as dead in the hand as any bow I've shot. The PSE Evoke 31, Hoyt Helix Ultra, Bowtech Realm SR6, and Prime Logic CT3 are also worthy of mention. The Evoke is the quietest PSE I've had the pleasure of shooting, and the Elastomers and the Hoyt Helix Ultra string do a great job of keeping the bow quiet. Grip is the next category, and this has been a huge one for me over the years, but honestly none of these grips are really giving me a problem this year. Not long ago the Bowtech and Matthews grips used to give me fits, but they've both been replaced by grips that I find both repeatable and comfortable. If I had to pick a winner, I'd call it a tie between the Bowtech Realm SR6 and the PSC Evoke 31, but the margin between all seven in this comparison is so small that it's hardly worth mentioning. The next category is tunability, and since I set up all my own bows myself, it's a pretty important one to me. Fortunately this year I didn't have trouble setting up most of these bows, and if I had to pick a winner, I'm probably going to go somewhere between the Bowtech Realm SR6 and the two Obsessions. All three of those were dead simple for me to set up this year. I've always been a fan of Bowtech's top and bottom yokes for fine tuning aeroflight, and the Realm SR6 is no exception. This system just makes for stress free bow tuning. I normally don't love bows without any method of affecting camling without moving shims around, but both of the Obsession bows were super easy to set up. The Lawless in particular took zero effort to get shooting perfectly. The FXL center shot is definitely off a fair bit to the left, but it hasn't stopped my arrows from flying straight. I don't love the fact that I have to remove the limb stops every time I put the bows in a press, but that's a fairly minor inconvenience. Really the only bow that gave me any difficulty this year was the Prime Logic CT3, which was a surprise as I've never had any trouble with Prime bows in the past. I ultimately got my vertical tear figured out, but it took a little more time than I would have liked. The easiest category for me to rank every year is speed. I just let the chronograph do all the work. This year I shot all seven bows with a 350 grain gold tip platinum pierce arrow and a 475 grain gold tip airstrike arrow. All the bows were set at 70 pounds of draw weight and draw lengths range between 29 and a half and 30 inches. You can check out our speed test video for more information on this. 
This year, the Botec Realm SR6 earned top marks with speeds of 339 feet per second with the light arrow and 295 feet per second with the heavier arrow. The Obsession Lawless finished second with speeds of 335 and 295 feet per second, which is plenty fast, but it's a long way from its advertised speed of 370 feet per second. The Matthews Vertex and PSC Evoke 31 were neck and neck when you take Matthews' draw length penalty into account, and the Hoyt Helix Ultra, Obsession FXL, and Prime Logic CT3 were all within a few feet of second of each other with both arrows. The next category is fit and finish, and since these are all flagship level bows, I was expecting excellent fit and finish quality, and I was not disappointed. If I had to pick a winner, I'm going to go with the Prime Logic CT3. Prime's fit and finish is as good as anyone's in the industry, and the new morel color on the riser and limbs of the CT3 is stunning in person. This bow has no visible flaws, including a string and cables that are holding up great. The Botec Realm SR6, Hoyt Helix Ultra, and Matthews Vertex also provide exceptional fit and finish, and all three bows look great. The Realm family of bows just looks awesome to me, especially with the flat dark earth riser. The Hoyt and Matthews are seeing a little peep rotation from string stretch, but nothing unreasonable. The PSC Evoke 31 looks nice dressed in camo, and the strings are holding up great, but there is a little flaking near the top and bottom holes on the riser. As for the Obsession bows, both had draw length modules that needed to be locked tighted down to stop from coming loose and rattling, and the Lawless is dealing with some serving separation on its cables on both cams. Our final category is price and value, and though all of these bows are priced within about $100 of each other, I think the Obsessions, the Prime, and the Botec all offer a little bit of extra value. Obsession gets bonus points for all the ways you can dress your bow up, which includes 31 different riser colors, 18 limb colors, 9 string colors, and 3 cam colors. If my math is correct, that is more than 15,000 different combinations you can choose from. Pretty incredible. Prime gets extra value from providing you with both string and cable stops, and offering free replacement strings every two years for the original owner. Botex flip disc technology is another piece of hidden value. By simply flipping the rotating modules on the top and bottom cams, you can completely change how the bow's draw cycle feels. Now's the time where I have to pick a winner, and this is always tough. Realistically, everybody is making solid bows these days, and I would be happy to take any of these into the woods with me this fall. But if I'm spending my own money on a hunting bow this year, I'm going to go with the Matthews Vertex. Matthews finally has a grip that I like, and the result is a bow I am completely comfortable with at any distance I've shot it. It holds rock steady at full draw with or without a stabilizer, and after the shot, it is as quiet as any hunting bow I've ever used. But this is far from a one-horse race. The Hoyt Helix Ultra and PSE Evoke 31 missed the top spot by the narrowest of margins, and the others were not far behind. The bottom line is that with so many great bows available, it is a fantastic time to be a bow hunter.